Now here the question is, if the latest rectum through one focus subtends a right angle at the farther vertex of hyperbola, then we need to find its eccentricity. So we have this hyperbola. And we also have this one latest rectum. So we know that n points of latest rectum are a e comma b square upon a and a e comma minus b square upon a and this farther vertex is minus a comma zero. Now the question says this angle is 90 degrees. So we need to find its eccentricity. So we'll find m1 and we'll find m2. So we know that m1 will be b square upon a upon a e plus 1 and in the same way we can write b2 and b2 will be minus b square upon a and will be a e plus 1. Now product of slope is minus 1. So we'll get minus b to the power 4 upon a to the power 4 e plus 1 whole square and this is equal to minus 1. So minus and minus will cancel. So we can write b to the power 4 equals a to the power 4 into e plus 1 square. Now we can also write this as b square equals a square into e plus 1. Now b square is a square into e square minus 1. So it will be a square and e square minus 1 is e plus 1 into e minus 1 and it will be a square e plus 1. So a square will cancel e plus 1 will also cancel as e cannot be minus 1. So from here we will get the value of e as simply 2. So the eccentricity of this hyperbola is simply 2. And that's your option 2. Let us take up an example. Here the question is the equations of the transverse and conjugate axis of a hyperbola are respectively x plus 2y minus 3 equals 0 and 2x minus y plus 4 equals 0. So this is your transverse axis and this is your conjugate axis and their respective lengths are root 2 and 2 upon root 3. That means 2a equals root 2. So basically a is 1 by root 2 and 2b is 2 upon root 3. So value of b is 1 by root 3. Now as we can see Slope of this line is minus 1 by 2 and slope of this other line is 2. So basically m1 into m2 is minus 1. So these two axes they are perpendicular and we need to find hyperbola for these axes. Now we know that equation of hyperbola is given by pn square upon a square minus pm square upon b square and it is equal to 1. Now pn is distance from conjugate axis and pm is distance from transverse axis. So distance from conjugate axis will be 2x minus y plus 4 upon now this is under root of 2 square plus 1 square whole square upon a square and a square is 1 by 2 minus and pm square is distance from transverse axis and it will be x plus 2y minus 3 upon under root of 1 square plus 2 square whole square divided by b square and there will be 1 by 3 and it is equal to 1. Now we simplify this. This 2 will go in the numerator and here this value is 5 so it will be this 2 by 5, 2x minus y plus 4 whole square minus and here this is 3 and this is 5. So it will be minus 3 by 5, x plus 2y minus 3 whole square equals 1 and that's your option A. Now let us take another example and here we need to find eccentricity of this conic which is given by 4 2y minus x minus 3 whole square minus 9 2x plus y minus 1 whole square 
and it is equal to 80. Now, if we look at these two lines, 2y minus x minus 3 equals 0 and 2x plus y minus 1 equals 0. Here the slope is 1 by 2 and here this slope is minus 1. So basically they are perpendicular lines. So essentially it is a hyperbola and we have to write it in the form pn square upon a square minus pm square upon b square equals to 1 in order to find the value of a and b and from a and b we can find the value of e. So now pn is perpendicular distance of this line from xy. So basically pn it will be 2y minus x minus 3 upon and this is under root of 4 plus 1 root 5 and the same way pn will be 2x plus y minus 1 upon root 5. So what we will do is we will multiply and divide everything with 5. So here it will be 4 into 5 and here will be 2y minus x minus 3 upon root 5 whole square minus 9 into 5 and this is 2x plus y minus 1 upon root 5 whole square and this is equal to 80. Now this is pn so we can write this as pn square upon and here it will be 80 by 20 minus pm square upon 80 divided by and 5 into 9 is 45 and this is equal to 1. So this is the equation of our hyperbola. Now in this case this is your a square and that's your b square. So here a square is 80 by 20 which is 4 and b square is 80 divided by 45 so it will be 16 by 9. Now we know that for a hyperbola b square is a square into e square minus 1. Now b square is 16 by 9 a square is 4 and this is e square minus 1. Now this is 4 by 9 we can write e square as 1 plus 4 by 9 which is 13 by 9. So value of e is simply under root 13 by 3 and that's your option B. So there could be questions in hyperbola where you will have your x's which are perpendicular but they are not parallel to x-axis or y-axis and this is how we solve such questions. Now here the question is if a variable straight line which is chord of this hyperbola it subtends a right angle at the center of hyperbola then it will always touch a fixed circle whose radius and center is. So we know that here we are talking about equation of pair of lines joining point of intersection of a given line and a given curve. So how do we solve such questions? We solve such questions by making the curve homogeneous. And for making the curve homogeneous, what we'll do is we'll write this equation as x cos alpha plus y sin alpha upon p and this is equal to 1. Now in this equation, these two terms, they are already of degree 2. So we can make the curve homogeneous as x square upon a square minus y square upon b square and it must be equal to x cos alpha plus y sin alpha upon p whole square. Now this homogeneous equation will represent equation of pair of straight lines joining these point of intersections. Now we know that in pair of straight lines, the two given lines are perpendicular when the sum of coefficient of x square and coefficient of y square is 0. So here we will find coefficient of x square. So in this case coefficient of x square will be 1 upon a square minus cos square alpha upon p square and then plus what is the coefficient of y square coefficient of y square will be 1 upon b square and here it will be minus sine square alpha upon p square and this value it must be 0 so from here we will get this condition which is 1 upon a square minus 1 upon b square and it should be equal to 1 upon p square so from here we will get this p as 
ab upon under root of b square minus a square. Now this line, which is x cos alpha plus y sin alpha equals to p, its perpendicular distance from origin, it is p upon 1, so it is p. So this line, it will always touch a circle whose center is at origin and whose radius is equal to p. Now we know that p is ab upon under root of b square minus a square. So option b and c, they are correct. Now example 23, it says, if pq is a double ordinate of hyperbola, x square upon a square minus y square upon b square equals 1 such that OPQ is an equilateral triangle, then eccentricity of the hyperbola satisfies which of the following options. So we know that for a hyperbola, We can choose any double ordinate as a secant theta, b tan theta, and this point q as a secant theta minus b tan theta. Now it says this double ordinate, it makes an equilateral triangle with center. So if this double ordinate makes an equilateral triangle, so that means this angle, it must be 30 degrees. So if this angle is 30, we can write 10, 30. And this is equal to b tan theta upon a secant theta. Now tan 30 is simply 1 by root 3. So we can write 1 by root 3 and it is equal to b upon a. Now tan theta is sin theta upon cos theta and secant theta is 1 upon cos theta. So it will be b upon a sin theta. So from here we can write sin theta and it is equal to a upon root 3b. Now we know that sin theta, it will always be less than 1. So it will be less than 1. So we know that a square will be less than 3 times b square. Now b square is a square into e square minus 1. So we can cancel a square with a square. So we can write 3e square and it is greater than 4. So value of e is greater than 2 by root 3. So answer to this question is value of e should be greater than 2 by root 3.